Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video we're covering OMGS, uh, GF, which is from the same developer as the Optimize, the Google Analytics Optimization Suite. Basically, it allows you to locally host your Google Analytics script. It's a little bit more involved than the previous plugin that I showed on this channel, but once you get it, you may prefer this plugin. So how it works is number one, you have to either search for the the Google fonts that you want to be loaded, or you could try to use the auto detect functionality. I did make sure that I had at least one Google font loading and we have Source Sans Pro with some parameters given to it for the different sizes that we need. You can go ahead and click the auto detect and what it'll try to do is go to your website and find the fonts that it needs. So auto detect is enabled and it recommends that you go to your website and you open up a page. So we're gonna click the home page, and we're gonna click a post. We're now going to refresh the page and it's listed out the fonts that it determines are needed, which looks about right. The 300, 400, 600, 700, 900 fonts were all required. It loaded the italic font style and we can modify some of the settings. So for instance, it says it's available subsets are Latin and Latin extended. Because I'm an English speaker, I'm not going to need Latin extended, so I would want to uncheck this. And then we could you could choose to search for font styles if you so wish. And it determined it also had a couple of more files that it wanted to include it. We're going to uncheck the Latin extended option. We don't need the Latin extended option. And we can also choose if we wish to preload the Google fonts here. Um, Preloading the font files via this method can be okay, but what you may find is if you are preloading them here, certain plugins, notably WordPress Rocket, may have an issue with adding their own preload tags. Uh, preload is widely supported though by modern browsers, and you should only be preloading the fonts that you need immediately. So you wouldn't want to preload all of your font files because most of them are not going to be used in most areas. If you want to determine which one you should preload, a good measurement is what is the font file or the font size rather that we're using here. So we're using a 16 font san, uh, source sans, but which font weight are we using? So 400 is what's typically defined as normal. So it's going to be your standard text that you're going to use. It's not too bold and it's not too thin. So what we could do is choose to only preload this text because we know that we're going to need this to at least render our menu in most of the above the fold content. I wouldn't ever preload your italicized font because quite frankly, I can't think of a situation when somebody is using an italicized font, at least for their above the fold content. You'll click apply and it says uh, one font was set to preload. We're just gonna go ahead and download these fonts. We're preloading the normal font here, and now we can go to our advanced settings. Under the advanced settings, this is when you can modify some of the aspects about it. So auto remove, auto remove will try to remove any Google fonts on your front end that it can find. It will not work with all of them. Certain themes per, uh, will try to load via the web font loader, which is a JS library that asynchronously downloads the fonts. So that way they're downloaded after basically everything else. The downside of that implementation is the library is quite bulky and slow for mobile devices, so you would get hurt performance-wise trying to use it. If you have that implemented already on the website, you'll need to disable that. And if your theme developer uses it and you're not a developer yourself, you may need to contact them and suggest that they disable it on their own. But auto remove works for basic implementations. As we can see here, the storefront inline CSS is right here. I'm going to click auto remove. And we're going to see if it gets removed. It removed it perfectly. And what we can now see in the header, though, is it preloads that Source Sans Pro that we needed. And we can go ahead and look for our fonts to make sure that they are being included on the front end. We're going to go ahead and also make a couple more changes real quick though. We're going to enable under font display, make sure it is to swap. Swap basically tells the browser, hey, this font isn't downloaded yet, but so instead of it being invisible, use a system font. And when you use the system font, 
um, just swap it out with our font once it's downloaded. The advantage here is it gives the user the, per the perception that your website's downloading faster because it doesn't have to wait for the font to be downloaded. When text is invisible, it gives the user the idea that the connection is either quite slow or that the website is slow. And when the text at least renders, it gives the user something to visually look at and read. You don't typically use swap for font awesome icons because when you use swap for font awesome, what happens is it replaces it with a random character that doesn't mean anything. So then it almost looks broken, but for regular text, it works quite well. You could choose to go ahead and serve the font files and save the font files from a different URL. Uh, otherwise it doesn't really matter. I would just leave them here. You could choose to force the SSL if a plugin is messing it up. If your website worked fine over SSL before and under settings general, it does show that you have the site as HTTPS, you don't need to check this option. You could just use a relative path. I don't recommend doing that because it will cause issues with the CDN. And quite frankly, you shouldn't be using the relative URL. You should always try to use the absolute URL if you can. You can choose to remove the version parameter from your font.css file, which is just removing query strings. You could choose to use the web font loader. I don't recommend doing this. It will, it says that it could raise your page feed score. It will not. I've never found a situation where it actually does lead to a performance increase over just loading the fonts as a CSS file and using um, an asynchronous loading library. If you're using a WordPress rocket, they have um, the optimized CSS option, which loads it via an async library and preloads the CSS file. That's going to be more preferable. That's going to be more preferable than using the web font library in any situation. So I would never check this option. You can use this option. It's not going to help your page feed score at all, but some people just don't like query strings. You could choose the in queue order of the style sheet as I um, covered in that analytics video. When you set it to a higher parameter, it puts it on a lower level. So if I wanted to load super early, I could put it to one. If I wanted to load after everything, then we can leave it at, we can increase it to like 90 and that would put it back pretty much after everything else on the screen. So as we could see here, where we removed the version parameter. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and log out just so that way I can illustrate that it's working. So we're here, we can see our preload request to that primary Google font file that we're going to need. Well, now that it's hosted locally, and we need to make sure that it is indeed loading our main style sheet. So that way users are getting optimal performance and that their fonts are being downloaded as expected. Well, it looks like it's not quite rendering. Let's go ahead and take a quick look to see if we can figure out why that is and not spitting out on the front end. We go over here and we're going to generate the style sheet again. There it goes. All right, so you may have an issue where the style sheet doesn't get generated automatically but once it is, you should be fine. As you can see here, the omgffonts.css sheet is here. And what's great about this is you can just read all the source attributes. It downloads the EOT font, it downloads WAF2, WAF, and TTF. So it has support with all modern browsers and Internet Explorer. But um, it has the backwards compatibility, it has the font display swap so that way your fonts are downloaded faster. And it does load them in, the in their own um, style sheets. So that way it can be merged if you're using something like Auto Optimize, WordPress Rocket, etc. This is a great plugin. It does have that kind of a learning curve with trying to figure out which fonts you actually need. But it does make it easy to integrate. And you can also modify which fonts are preloaded. If you're not using something to already manage your Google Fonts, this is a great option. If you want the easier method, the previous video I did is basically you just install it and it takes care of it. This video 
in this plugin are arguably better though, solely because once you do get all the fonts added, which can be a little tricky, even with auto detect, it will, you know, first of all, it'll disable the original style sheet. It will add font display swap and it'll let you preload. Just make sure you only preload what you need. Don't preload anything else because it will cause you problems. Uh, outside of that though, it works great. It's easy to use. And if you don't want to have a font downloaded, you can quite easily just un delete it and it will and regenerate the style sheet and it'll work without a problem. If you have any questions or you have an issue, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will gladly try to help you out. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.